Good evening, everybody. What a day today. Been a while. Today is what? July 28th, 7 o'clock, evening show. Going to be a good show. What's this show about? How to teach your dog how to play. Wow. you think this would be an easy thing to do. It's not sometimes. One of the things that you can do to mentally abuse your dog, yes, I said mentally abuse your dog. One of the things you can do to mentally abuse your dog is to not teach them how to play in a way that complements their instinct. Why? Because play is therapy for dogs. Play is therapy for dogs. It is imperative that you teach them how to play. It's therapy. For us, it's talking, right? Because we feel through conversation and we are led by emotions. So we have to talk our problems. We have to talk our issues out. Dogs, it's playing in a way that complements their instinct. Extremely important. What happens if you don't play with them and they get older? In my opinion, they develop what I call sinopath. All right, they become destructive because they don't know how to play. Their brain takes them to a different direction, takes them to a different direction. In 99% of the cases, it's destructive. All right, these are all the destructive behaviors that you're going to you're going to see if you don't play with them in a way that complements their instinct. Now, there are some uh, exceptions to the rule. Like I said, there are some dogs. Who don't who are who are, don't are not led by instinct, excuse me, who are not led by much instinct. Those are your emotional dogs, your King Charles Spaniels, your Papillons, um, your pugs, some pugs. There are some dogs who are very emotional who are not led by instinct. And you don't need to do a lot. But for the most, most breeds, you need to find an outlet that complements their instincts. All they want to do is be treated like dogs. That's it. All we want to do, all they want to do is be treated like dogs. All we want to do is be treated like humans, right? All we want to do is be loved. All we want to do is be loved. Isn't that important for us to be understood and heard and to be loved as human beings? So yes, all right. We're going to I'm going to give you some good tips. Now, you see a lot of these dogs that are brought up together with another dog and they're not allowed to appease their instinct. Or you get them from a rescue or adoption or the Humane Society or Animal Control. You get them from there and you get them and they don't know how to play at all. They don't even know how to play with a ball. How are they going to know that they're a dog if you don't, know, if you don't play with them in a the way that complements their instinct? How do they know they're a dog? They don't, do they? They don't. So I'm going to give you some tips. And again, I consider this mental abuse. When you don't play with a dog in a way that complements their instinct, to me, that is a level of abuse. It, that, because I see the blowback of it. And the blowback being sinopath, all right, destructive behavior. And what are the, uh, some of the destructive behaviors that you're going to see? Excessive barking, excessive chewing. Digging, pacing, unpredictable or aggressive aggression, jumping, humping, hyper. These are the destructive behaviors you're trying to avoid. So how do you avoid destructive behavior? You avoid them by appeasing their instincts. Now, some dogs won't even chase a ball. Some dogs, I'll be darn it, they even look at a Frisbee. But that's today's show. How do you start engaging them in this play? How do you start engaging them in this play so, so their instincts are triggered? Now, really, really important before I start talking. There is a certain age where dogs' instincts have not surfaced yet, meaning male under eight months, females under six months. Now, I, there are some puppies, their instincts do surface under those months. But understand that under... Under those months, for females 6 to 8, male 8 to 10, understand 
that they may not have developed that instinct. So you have to find something to trigger that instinct until they play. All right? Very important. Larry Dun uh, Dungy's here. Uh, Grace Newton. Uh, oh, yes, he definitely need the need, need way to play. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Grace, I'm glad you have, you're on here. Um, let's see. Rochelle's here. I'm glad you're here, Rochelle. I seen Connie on here. Vicki Roberts is here. Uh, Gay, Gay Vander, uh, Vanderberg is here. Uh, let's see. Somebody just said something. Jamie uh, Hansen's here. So true. Emmy doesn't allow Oscar to play. I have to create her while playing with Oscar. Yes, sometimes you have to split them up. You're right. Sometimes you have to split them up. Dave Burt's watching. Patty's going to be watching on my replay. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're going to watch my replay. Connie, I'm glad you're here too. Most of my shows are on replay, but I'm going to tell you right now. There's going to be a lot, a lot of people who I'm going to be sending this video to. I can't tell you how many people come to me and their dogs do not even know how to play with a ball. And they have destructive behavior. Come on, let's get them started. Now, sometimes they adopt them and they don't know how to play. Like you'll see a video of today um, with, with a dog that, that does that, doesn't even know how to play with anything. We have to start them from scratch and work our way up. And, and it could take up to months for this to happen. The last shepherd I had that needed to learn how to play, excuse me, it took me three weeks to get him to learn how to play with a ball, with a ball. His destructive behavior was aggression. And of course, that's how we handle stress. So we got him to play with a ball, all right? So again, thank you for being here. I am Hector Hernandez. This is the Canine Man Show, and we're gonna have a fun hour on teaching dogs how to play to avoid destructive behavior and to appease their instinct. Extremely important. Now, before I start, Julie, uh, Miss Kinsiski, hello from Poland. Poland, excuse me. Hello, Julie. I'm glad you're on here. Um, didn't know I reached Poland, but I know I reached Germany, and I know I've reached Mexico. Didn't know about in Australia. So I'm glad you're on here. Any questions, let me know. Hey, um, real quick, uh, Julia, what is the number one dog in that country that bites? Can you tell me? I'm doing research. Uh, certain parts of Canada, it's a golden retriever. So I'm just curious. So Sherry Martinez is here. Thank you for watching. Now, there's two games that I don't want you to play with your dog. Big no-no. And we need to talk about that. That is a big no-no. Don't chase the dog, chasing games. Don't wrestle, no wrestling, or no slap boxing with the dog. These are the games you don't want to play with dogs. These three games convey to the dog that you're a dog too. And in return, they will treat you like a dog. If you don't want to be treated like a dog, then don't play with them like a dog. <laughs> and oftentimes, you'll get a dog who will bully you, who will bite you, and think you're a dog too. So those are the three games you don't want to play. I said two in the beginning. I meant three. All right? No, no wrestling, no chasing, and no slap boxing. What I mean by slap boxing is using your hands to, you know, throw them, hit their face back and forth. Wrestling, that one's easy. You know, you're good on the ground with them and you wrestle and then chase them. You chase them, they chase you, you chase them. Uh-uh, don't do that. Very, very, very important because those, those convey to the dog that you're a dog too. So very important for you to know that. Now, when you're dealing with an adult dog, puppy's going to have plenty of energy. So between, between when you get your dog, female under six months, male under eight, you're gonna be playing games that appease their instinct, but they're not fully developed yet. One of the things that I really love is what you call a flirt pole. It's what I call a flirt pole. It's a, it's, it's a stick, at the, and at the end, it looks like a fishing pole, but it literally it's got something at the end. And you run with this back and forth to get them to play. This is my favorite game to play with a dog. Let me show you with the video that I have here. To help you here the flirt pole I like this game because again again it triggers the dog's instinct 
this is a dog I had in my puppy class, and it was just laying around not doing anything. And I'm like, we got to find something to trigger this dog's instinct. So I got the flirt pole out, and boom, the dog just picked his body up and started to chase it. This is how we appease their instinct. And the owner does an excellent job of using a ball at the end because at the end, that's what the dog's going to be playing with. And again, their instincts haven't been developed yet. Now, one of the things I like about the flirt pole, and a lot of people complain about this. This is why I'm going to address this. One of the things I like about the flirt pole is that it, it removes your hands from getting bitten. So you don't have to wear gloves and you don't have to worry about it. But I like it because it, it's an extension of your hands and they don't bite your hands while they're playing with an object. Very, very, very important because sometimes we get upset that they, they, they've bitten us. Sometimes we get irritated. It takes the fun out of it. So I like to extend it with a flirt pole. One of the most favorite toys I like with puppies is the flirt pole. And you can get some dogs that will like it or some dogs that don't do anything when you throw something at them like this dog. If you notice this dog, I throw something and he just looks at it like, what is that? That's nothing. N Listen, this dog is designed to bite and go after animals and there's nothing. So we had to try the treat. I throw the treat and he slowly, go he slowly goes and gets it. So this is a game that I love. I throw the treat and they go get it. And you can play with a dog like this over and over until the dog learns to run and chase the treat. And when he comes back to you, he gets another treat. So I call it the three, the, the, the three, oh my goodness, the treat throw game. You throw the treat, they run and go get it and eat it. They come back to you and you give them a treat again. It's a back and forth game. Now, why do I like this with puppies and adult dogs, especially adult dogs? I like this with adult dogs because when they go chase something, don't they kill it and eat it? Yes. So it triggers their killing instinct. It triggers their prey instinct to go run after something, eat it. You're doing the same thing. So what happens when they're puppies, what happens when they're adult, something just clicks in their brain. When I go run after something, I'm going to eat it. And then what you do, eventually you go to a ball that you can put treats in it. So what you're doing, you're actually mirroring their prey instinct. They go kill something. They go bite the ball. They squeeze it. And, and then it, uh, treats come out of it. Just like they would eat an eat a animal. So this is very, very good thing to start with. I start with throwing a treat, have them go get it, run back to me for another treat, back and forth. And then I introduce the ball with a hole in it and put treats in it. Now, what this does, again, this empties out as it's rolling, or maybe not, when it gets to it, when they, the dogs get to it, they bite it, and then a treat will come out of it. Again, what you're doing is you're mirroring the prey instinct, the killing instinct of going after something and eating it. You're mirroring that. And you know they're going to want a treat or food, and that's what you do. You get a dog who's emaciated and doesn't know how to play, this is the first game I would do. Throw the treats back and forth, get them to eat it, get them to go run, run for a treat, run back for another one, put treats inside a ball, and have them chase the ball. Again, why? Well, you know you're going to feed them, but also you're giving them therapy, mental therapy. And that is number one for a dog when they've been mentally abused, when they've been abandoned. That's what you want to do is you want to give them therapy. You're going to build trust with love and affection. Now you have to do therapy. All right? Very, very important. Any questions? If Ziggy does that. He doesn't play. Hey, Chris Schultz. Um, I saw you on TikTok, Chris. <laughs> I seen you dancing, Chris. Good, good little clip. Hey, Chris, start using the treat. Get, in the, get a ball that you can put treats inside it. And then roll this so they can go chase it. Now, I would like two of these, Chris. Get two balls. Throw one 
And it, once he's done eating all the treats and he, he's not interested anymore, throw the other one. Throw the other one. But this is what you want to use all the time. Very important so you can appease their instinct. Again, this is number one. This is number one that you want to do. Very, very important. I seen that uh, uh, Julia Rottweilers and pit bulls. Um, that's that's what I um, that's what I was guessing. I wasn't sure. Um, you might get an email from me though. But anyways, thank you for that. Uh, let's see here, Michelle. Michelle's control. Hello. I have two Chihuahuas. One loves to play, and the other one just wants to be in my lap at all times. He doesn't even go outside, and he chases her away from me. Um, so, Michelle Contrell, what you want to do is isolate each one, just like somebody said they had to do here. Isolate each one, and then making sure that you individually play with them. But understand, the one that just sits around, if it's a chihuahua, any of these dogs, make sure you physically decompress them first to make sure there's no stress on their body, because chihuahuas are predisposed to internalize stress. So massage the dog and start throwing the treat. So what you want to do for all dogs, what you want to do if they don't know how to play, suppress their energy, suppress their energy. All right. That means no walking, no playing, suppress it and only get it out when you're playing with a ball or with a treat. That's it. Suppress their energy. And then in some cases, suppress their food. In other words, make their serving their food, their game. So you would feed them one full meal. The second meal, you're going to play with them. Throw, throw the treat far away so they go get it and come back for another treat. There are some treats that I like. Oh, I dropped my favorite ball. I'm going to have to go get it sometime or another. There are some treats that you can get that are already balls. And this is what I like. This one's called uh, Nudge It. Um, nudge It. I like these just for this game. Now, I know I might be promoting a, a food that dogs don't like, but it's not something you're going to be married to all the time. In one instance, I had an owner make hamburger, ma make hamburger balls for her dog, and it worked really good for her. So she, she and I like these because you can throw them, and they can roll, and they go get them, they eat them, they come back, or you can throw another one somewhere else, and it's great. Some dogs, they love the noise. They love the noise of a ball. The noise triggers, triggers their killing instinct like a rabbit. Or they just like the noise. Some dogs just like the noise. But it's really good to find a toy that they like. Find a toy that they're going to like. And sometimes, sometimes you have to actually go find, go, this is puppy heaven right here. I got to go get a ball that I dropped. Give me one second. One of my favorite balls, and I gotta make sure that I show you because I like this one. So what happens is you end up getting a lot of toys for your puppy, and we all know we do. And what happens is that they lose their value. They start to lose their value because you have them out there so much. Now, remember what I said about how to play with your dogs and my how to manage your dog inside and out. One of the rules that I said was don't play with your dog in the house. Now, the exception to the rule is if your dog doesn't play at all, doesn't know how to play at all, whether it's a puppy or an adult, then you want to play with them in the house. You want to trigger that in the house. And then once they know how to play, then you stop it. Then you, you change the boundaries only outside. But in the house, you want to try to get them to play. And a lot of times, all they want to do is play in the house because they're too afraid to be outside, especially the puppies. So in the house is going to be your best option. An uh, older dog who's been abused with a shot collar, who's been abused in general, sometimes you don't want to play with them outside. You just want to play with them inside when they're completely naked. No collar, no leash, no nothing. And they seem to do a lot better inside. Um, let me see. I had a question here. Uh, yeah, Janice was the one who said that she has to separate the two dogs uh, Gracie, what is the dog that bites most in America? I think the dog, my understanding is, um, the dog who, I don't, wait a minute. I don't know, Gracie. I know the dog who causes more damage 
and has more deaths only because of the scope of the job that I work on. And that's um, a lot of either, either uh, the American Stafford Terrier or Pitbull or mixes. Um, those are the ones, but they cause a lot of damage in such a short amount of time. And, and I'm glad you mentioned this. And Gracie, think about this. Those dogs don't have an outlet. Could they? Could they have Sinopath? Huh? Could they have Sinopath because the owners don't play with the dogs? Because the owners just has them as an emotional pet. And they don't realize that dogs want to be treated like dogs and need an outlet. Could they have tacked their owners? Could they have tacked a person because they're not playing with a dog? Because, excuse me, well, they're not playing with a toy. And they're not playing with the owner. Could they have developed Sinopath? I've seen many dogs. I'll show you a video of one I'm talking about. Oh, I hope, I hope I have it. I know I have it here. Let me look here. Here it is. Oh, nope, that's not it. Uh, well, I thought I had it. It was, a, it was a dog who I had to tell him to put, them to, put the dog to sleep because it was so destructive. Um, it was even attacking the owner at times. Um, so I, I, didn't, I guess I don't have it on here. I thought I did. Um, I, did ha I did have that in my other show where the, um, the dog was like that. Nope, I don't have it here. But, um, but it, it, it's, it's pretty serious, Judith, and Raven actually doesn't know how to play, hoping for after this. I'm sure it's me, though, in my age. Well, no, it's kind of easy, Judith. I'm glad you're on here. Uh, I'll get with you, Chris. Don't, <laughs> I'll get with you, Chris. Uh, Ziggy does not, Diggy does that, he doesn't play. It, I'm telling you, you have to get him to play. Uh, and German Shepherd too. Thank you, Julia, for qualifying that. Um, so, very important. Understand that we have to get these dogs to play. Judith, I know your Raven likes treats. Throw a treat, have her go get it, come back. Get a ball that's got a hole in it so that she can run for the treat. Suppress her second meal or use the second meal as play. Use the second meal as play. All right? Very, very important. Um, and then, again, find a game that they like. So I talked about the flirt pole. I even showed you a video. Here's another ball that I like. I like the jolly ball with the rope on it because some dogs will choose either tug or bite the ball or just bite the ball and no tug. But I like this one for dogs who don't know how to play at all. All right? Now, with this toy and with any other rope toy, Make sure, this is important, people. Make sure you do not allow them to chew on this, just to play. Why? If they eat these fibers, they can get caught in their intestines, and you're going to have to take them in for emergency surgery. All right? So this is just to play, and that's it. Just to play. Put it away afterwards. But I like this one the best. Plus, you can throw it better by holding a hand and tossing it. So it's got rope at one end and the ball in the inside. And again, you're just playing with them and then putting it away. Not all the time. For dogs who are just learning, just learning how to play, Chuck It also makes a Frisbee that I really like. Why do I really like it? Most dogs, they, when, they, when they try to play with the Frisbee, it's really hard and they don't like it. This one's nice and soft. So when you roll it, yes, roll it on the ground, when you roll it on the ground really fast, they, they, if they bite it, it's soft. It's not going to bother their teeth and won't hurt their teeth. And since they're puppies, sometimes this is what you want so they don't hurt their teeth, especially when they're just coming in. But this is a good Frisbee to get to get them to play. But look for toys that are going to stimulate their, their mind by moving. That's why I like the flirt pole so much. It's going to stimulate their mind from, from moving. Um, for dogs... Remember, uh, for the dogs who, who I want to appease their instinct, remember, a lot of golden retrievers, uh, well, a, lot, a lot of retrievers, they, they, they are bred with a soft mouth. 
So when you play with them, try to play with a ball that is soft, that it's not hard. This is a material-based ball. Chuck it, kick it, kick, fetch. I like this because the dog can grab it. A soft-mouthed dog can grab it and carry it. All right? German Shepherd will tear this up in a matter of a second. A pit bull will tear it up in a matter of a second. A shepherd will tear it up in a matter of a second. A Rottweiler will tear it up in a matter of a second. So you want to use this bit of lab and golden retriever or a, 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 a German pointer, a, a, a Wamuaner, very good ball because they're bred with soft mouths. So even when they're puppies, you want them to get a small ball. They make them in different sizes. But this is one of my favorite ones for soft mouth. And then my, my favorite for strong, strong dogs is going to be your Jolly Pet soccer ball or a Jolly ball that they can bite, Ones that, one that they can squeeze. One that they can squeeze. So, and make sure I got everything. Very, very important, you guys. Get them to play with a treat. Throw the treat. Throw it. And then have them, have them come back for another one. Retrieve with treats. Throw the ball. Throw the tennis ball. Or, oh, I like the chuck it ball better than the tennis ball. Why do I like the chuck it ball better? Because it's rubber. And the, the fibers sometimes will wear down the dog's teeth. And you can get a squeaker or one without a squeaker. But remember, I like to even use treats when I play ball with my dog. I'll throw the ball, give him a treat, and then throw it again. So he lets go of it. Why has he got to let go? Because he's got to get the treat in his mouth. So when he lets go, you tell him what? Out. So instead of taking it from his mouth which he's not going to want to come back to you because he's going to take it away. He can come back to you for a treat. He drops it to eat the treat. You say out or release and then give him the treat, pick up the ball, and do it again. So it's a positive thing back and forth. I do that as puppies so they learn when they come to me, I'm not going to just take the ball away. I'm going to play with them right afterwards, and they're going to get a reward. So we can ruin it when they're puppies. But throw the treat. Have them rush and go get it, roll the treat, have them go get it, come back, get a treat again. And do this until you can use the ball with a hole in it, with treats in it, roll this, have them get it, have them play with it, get two or three of these, throw the other one when they're done eating the other treats, throw the other one. Remember, you not only just want to make them happy, you want to fulfill the puppy. You don't want to just make them happy, fulfill them. And again, under six months, females, their instincts may not have kicked in, so you have to trigger it with a game. Eight to ten months for males until their instincts are triggered. Then you won't need to use treats. They're just going on instinct. Now remember, when instinct is kicked in, instinct is self-rewarding, isn't it? Instinct is self-rewarding. So when they chase the ball... They reward themselves. And the reason why I like to throw the treat and have them go get it is because you're mirroring their prey instinct. They go chase the prey and they eat it. You're triggering that. And sometimes you have to get that primitive when they don't know how to play at all. And remember, if you don't play with them, to me, that is mental abuse. That's mental abuse because play is therapy for dogs. Play is therapy for dogs. Very, very important. Play is therapy. Let me read a note that uh, Daniel wrote me here. Uh, I made a floor pole out of a horse lunge whip and tie burlap and tug rope and tennis ball at the end. Good, Daniel. Good initiative. I like your creativity. Um, Tractor Supply has a large one, and I think that's what she was using with her dog here. So they, it's very, very good game. I'm telling you, the flirt pole is a lifesaver for puppies. You can disconnect from getting bit in the hand with the flirt pole. And like what Daniel says, you can trigger their killing instinct for them chasing something. Really, really important. Uh, Grace says, oh, all we have is shepherds and pit bulls. That toys, what toys do you recommend? Now, uh, Grace, do they play at all? Or are, these, or are these dogs that, that you get that play a little but don't play at all? This show is designed for dogs who don't play at all. I mean, there's nothing in them like that dog that you saw on the video. 
And sometimes you first start them with a treat, then you go into a ball with a treat, or you can use a ball and a rope, or you can use a flirt pole. But remember, Grace, try to suppress, suppress their plate. This means you can't take them for long walks because you're going to take out all their energy. You can't go for long runs or you're going to take away all their energy. Get them to play only with what you're doing, and that's it. Feed them the, in the morning, the second serving, use his play. Throw the treats back and forth. Let them go get it. Heck, some people throw the treat and they have to look for it. That's fine because they're searching now. There's nothing wrong with that. I know one couple who, who froze, um, froze dog food in ice cubes, and they would throw the ice cubes, and the dog would go get it and find it. And it would still be cold. It didn't take that long for the dog to look for it. But, I mean, you have to be creative with some of these dogs. It, you have to. Why is it that you have to? Because it's therapy for dogs. Why is it that you have to talk about your problems? Because it's therapy for us men and women. I say men because we have a tendency to suppress our, um, uh, our feelings more than women. But it's very important to talk about our problems. It's very important to play with these dogs. Extremely important. Uh, let's see here. Christian Grover's back. Willow plays better in the house. Was not always the case. But she is such a scary cat that sounds the things distract her in the mind play. And then she's done. We, we have that ball. Yes, there are some cases, Christian, where you have to play in the house. And outside is their way to decompress. I mean, you, you have exceptions to the rule. When I talk, when I give a show, I give a... I don't give a blanket statement for all dogs. I give a general statement. A general statement because I'm speaking to most people here with, with the dog that I'm speaking about. But I'm just giving ideas too. Just ideas. And that's it. And it's very important. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, okay, hold on here. Oscar is seven and likes to nurse on his wubby toys, yes, he has a mouth fetish. He chews on items that he likes smacking on some gum forever. He has flosses his front teeth with, with blades of grass. Yes, Janice, yes, some dogs, um, it's, a, uh, it's a calming effect, Janice, when they suck, suck on something like that. It calms them. Um, and sometimes they learn that as, as puppies when they're suckling on their mother and their mother doesn't produce any milk, but they're still suckle or they've been left with, with a female who doesn't produce any more milk and the puppies still suck. So what happens is that they learn to calm themselves while suckling and that's a calming effect. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, if you want to trigger her killing instinct, uh, I say killing loosely. I say prey instinct is put something at the end of it like Daniel and get her to play with a flirt pole. All right. Dogs are not moral creatures, so killing, killing isn't a, a word that, that should be associated with something negative with a dog who's not a moral creature. Um, that's just what they do. It's, us, it's up to us to decide, to, to make sure that they don't kill something that, that is morally wrong, you know, a person, another animal, uh, another pet, uh, something like that. Um, what about a five sensory ball? Um, a five sensory ball, those are dogs that make the balls that make noises and that vibrate, Daniel. Um, that to me, um, in my experience, it scares more dogs than anything. But yes, you can use it as an experiment. But um, many cases, it scares dogs more than anything. But in other cases, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, a dog with a strong prey drive, if you get it throwing it and they make a loud noise, and they keep making a noise, it triggers them, like a lawnmower does, the tires, like a vacuum does. And those, those dogs, but usually those dogs don't have a problem with playing because anything triggers them. I'm talking about dogs who really have no, no desire to go chase something, no desire to go run after something and mim mimic and mirroring the killing instinct, the prey instinct of an animal. They have none. So I like throwing the treat, have them get it, bring it back, give them another treat. You can play this until they're full. You can play it until they're full. And that, those are the ones that I'm talking about. Becca, that was your little puppy heaven house. <laughs> I'm glad you're on here. Yes, this is how uh, Anna learned out, and she's so solid on it. Yes, and also carried over to a prey drive thing. It's so awesome. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how important it is to bring the ball, give them a treat, 
tell them to release it, and then ha throw the treat again. What happens is that we ruin it. We take it away from them and don't give them anything. They're like, I'm not coming to you. Why? You're going to take what I'm playing. Uh-uh. I give them a treat in replace of the ball and throwing it back and forth. What you don't want to do is play that in any other game. Redirecting has ruined more dogs than you can imagine. So you don't want to do it through redirecting. You want to do it through play, a positive thing, not through redirecting, through play. Very, very important. Uh, Judith, uh, this is why I love you. I love you too, Judith. <laughs> now, why I don't think, <laughs> didn't think of throwing treats. Jeez. Well, Judith, remember, it's not that I know more than you, Judith, is that I get emerged in problem dogs or dogs who have been abused, dogs who have been isolated, abandoned, and then they're not stimulated mentally. And remember, when they're not stimulated mentally, they get sinopath. So how do you give them therapy? If they have sign up, how do you give them therapy? You can't sit down and talk to a dog. Tell me what you're thinking. What's your, what, how, what, why do you feel this way? We already know because you're not playing with them in a way that complements their instinct. It's so important, people. You could really, really, really change a dog from night to day with just play. I do it all the time, all the time. Uh, see, uh, Grace, yes, they love to play, but ruin all the toys. But a few of them have Sinopath, I think because they hump and they're aggressive with each other and all. Yes, you're right, Grace. Humping is a destructive way to relieve stress, like I talked about in destructive behavior. I list those, Grace, just so when I see this, I have a reference point on what they need to do, which is play with their dog. If they're doing any one of these excessively, I know I can infer I can infer, not assume, I can infer that they're not playing with a dog in a way that complements their instinct. I had a trainer that came to me, very well-trained dog, scoring in the 90 points in competition. Her dog was better than my dog in, in obedience, but the dog was exhibiting destructive behavior. So I said to him, how are you playing with your dog? He says, I'm doing obedience. I said, no, no, how are you playing with him? I'm doing obedience. I said, do you see why you're having destructive behavior? Obedience is not a way that complements their instinct. It's a way to manage them and control them, but it's, <coughs> it's not a way to complement their instinct. Once he learned how to complement the dog's instinct, the dog is no destructive behavior. Took him six months. No destructive behavior, and the dog's still scoring in the 90s. Now, it started to score in the 80s, but then now it's starting to score back in the 90s, and it's playing in a way that complements their instinct, all right? So you, you can get both, uh, best of both worlds. I'm glad you're on here, Grace. You're in, you're, you, you do a rescue, and you have a lot to share, so I'm glad you're on here. Uh, let's see here. Daniel, this, is set, this has scent, taste, and squeak. Um, it does do that, but again, Daniel, a lot of dogs that I know, even this squeak noise startles them a little bit at first. So I kind of don't want to associate something that's afraid with, with something really in the beginning. So I try to, I try, that's why I try to use treats, or I try to use a ball with a, a hole in it so they can carry treats. But, Daniel, very good. Yes, you can use a ball. You can use a ball that has all those in there, the noise, the smell, and the movement, and the vibration even. Yes, you can. But some dogs, very, very timid. They don't even want to chase anything, but boy, if they're hungry, you give them a, a high-value treat. They want to run after it as fast as they can to go get it. <laughs> they want to run after it. Uh, what, what are good mental stimulating toys? Um, one of them is a flirt pole, and the other one is a, um, remember the one I told you about the flirt pole? Very, very important. I love the flirt pole. I'll do it again because I love it so much. I love it so much because it works. Get them out there with this floor pole. You can put anything at the end of this floor pole. You can put a ball. You can put a tug. You can put anything at the end of it so they can grab it. Find something that they like and they play. Anything. Get them to play. This is my favorite, Sabrina. This also disconnects your hands from the dog's sharp puppy teeth. And adult sharp puppy teeth. But I like that. Now, one of the things I got also, tennis balls are no go for mine. He just eats them. Uh, yes, yeah, Sabrina, go to, go to a chuck it. 
Go to a chuck it ball that's a little bigger, but don't let them have it. Just let them play and then put it away when you get done. Put it away when you get done. I ordered the same flirt pole, and Hector has an Amazon, has Amazon for cheap. Good. Good. I, I ordered mine from, uh, from uh, Amazon, too. I ordered, a, I ordered this one, Grace, the one that's got a, a, a class, collapsible end to it. I did it because I'm, I'm always crunched for a space. But I really like this because it literally, and when they move it, 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 it moves tail like a little rabbit. It just it mirrors, it mirrors their instinct. But again, I also like this one. If you don't have a flirt pole, if you don't have a flirt pole, you can always do what I do. Is um, you can always use a leash, put a leash, and at the end of it, put a toy at the end of it, and just let it run around. One of the things I do in my puppy class is um, if I get a puppy who's chasing the kids, their kids around, I'll tell them to put a leash and get a toy at the end of it and have the kid run around with the toy. So this is behind the kid, and the dog's not biting the, the kid, the dog's biting the toy. So the toy is what's moving instead of the kid's hands, instead of the kid's butt, instead of their legs. So then since it's, since it's running behind them, the dog will chase that and play with it. Many times owners will come to me, how do I get my, my puppy from not chasing the kids? And I know, as some people will say, well, just don't have the kids run around when the dogs are around. Well, they clearly have never had kids before. I do. I just say, kids, have something in your hand or put the leash at the end of it and put a toy and just run with it. Just play with it. Dog will start learning to not, to not focus on the kid, will start focusing on the toy that they're chasing. And that's what you want to do, start chasing. You can also use a lure game, a lure, L-U-R-E game. I got this for my dog. I'm going to start, I, I'm using it in my one-on-ones. If I get a dog with a high prey instinct, I use this inside my facility. This is the lure game. And what it does is my dog chases it and he's running in my backyard and he's just running. He's loving it, Malo. But it's getting him tired and he's running. Now, I practiced a recall with this. I had him come back to me and sit with me for a recall. Best place to do it is when they're chasing something. This is the lure game. Have them go get it, chase it. Now, one thing I noticed with him after he bit it, I let him play with it again, but very important, you guys, something that triggers their, their prey instinct to go chase it. Very good for them. So one of the things that I learned with the lure game, if you ever do this, there's two things that you want to do. Practice your recall, like I just did. You got to be able to recall your dog while he's chasing something. This is a good game to play. The second thing that I noticed my dog, he started to get frustrated at the end. At the end of the game, he got really edgy. What I mean by edgy, he started just getting antsy. So one of the things that I noticed after doing it twice that he'd get antsy. So what do I do to fix it? I had to play tug of war with him. Now why? He couldn't chase it and really tear into that, which allowed him to relieve his frustration. So I played tug of war with him to release that edginess. That was so important. So if you ever do play the lure game, which I have it in my facility now, if you ever do play with it, make sure that you give them something to tug at the end to release that instinct of biting something. If not, it's going to stay internally. That's why you have to really read your dog. Same with the laser pointer. The laser pointer is one of the worst games you play with a dog. Did you hear me? The laser pointer is one of the worst things you can play with a dog. It makes them neurotic. It makes them neurotic. And then they never bite something to relieve that stress. So that stress of biting something is internalized. You don't want to do that. This is why it's important if you do the lure game, play tug of war afterwards to release that frustration. All right? Release that frustration. But it's a good game to trigger their killing instincts. Toying and leash are good. How do you teach release? Uh, Vicky uh, Lachardi, you teach release with a treat. You can teach release with a treat um, in, the, in the puppy or even an adult. doesn't matter. They got it in their mouth. 
you show them a tree, and then you switch the tree with the ball. Then you throw the ball again. They're going to be eager to come back to you for a tree to release it. And even if they don't come to you, let's say they drop the ball at a distance. So what? Give them the treat anyways. Go get the ball and play back and forth again. Or don't give them a treat and go get the ball and do it until they, they bring it to you and, and give them the treat. I'm not too much of a stinkler. I just want my dog to run and chase the ball. I don't care if he doesn't bring it back or not in the beginning. I can care less. Eventually, it does happen because I'll have two or three of the same toys. So if I'm going to play chuck it with a dog who doesn't know how to play that will run after it but won't bring it back, I'm going to have two or three of these chuck it's. So when he drops it, he looks at me, I throw another one. He drops that one, I throw another one. Then I go get the first one. This, all I'm going to do is start to trigger the dog's prey instinct. I'm not worried about the dog bringing it back. I'm, for that matter, I'm not even worried about the dog letting go of it. As long as he's got in his mouth, I'll throw another one. Hopefully, he'll let go of the first one and go get the other one. So I can use a tree or a second ball, Vicky, for a reward for dropping the first one. Now, when he drops the first one, I'm going to tell him to out, to release. I'm going to label the word because dogs hear, they don't listen. Dogs hear, they don't listen. Uh, Kelly Grow. Uh, Base carries a jolly ball around all the time. He loves this morning and nighttime playtime. Yes, and I remember you, me telling you, give him the ball before you go out back, before your neighbor dogs start barking at you, Kelly. Don't think I haven't forgotten that question. Uh, I ordered the same. Okay, that was uh, Grace. Very good. Uh, Kelly Brunk, uh, when choosing balls, is it true that they see certain colors better than others? Ah, good question, Kelly uh, Brunk. My, my training and my experience, the answer is yes. They like the color green. <laughs> so I like the green. They like the color blue and white. Um, those are the, my favorite colors that I like. Blue and green seem to be the favorite. And the other one is yellow. Excuse me. Yellow, green, and blue seem to be my favorite colors for dogs. Although they'll chase anything. They just, they just see it. But for me to answer your question, to qualify it, yes, green, blue, yellow, their favorite colors. All right. Uh, let's see here. How do you know when your dog has released its stress? Well, physical stress or mental stress? Physical stress, you can do it through touch. Mental stress, you play with them. You play with, just do a little bit. I spend literally, my kids were over today. Can you believe that? My, my Brianna, my golden rose, and Melina, my, my angel, they were here today. <laughs> and we played with the dogs for 10 minutes. My dogs were tired. They were fine. They had no problem afterwards. Right now, they're laying down um, just 10 minutes. Uh, when they're puppies, of course, they require a lot more. Uh, some dogs um, with uh, anxiety, uh, anxiety or OCD or ADHD, they require a little bit more. And sometimes they require um, even more challenging games. For example, throwing the ball in the high grass and having them search for it. Um, scent the ball with some type of scent, whether it be lavender, whether it be uh, any other s smell, uh, cinnamon. Just scent it and then throw it in the high grass, have them search for it. Um, that's a challenging game for a hunting dog. They would love that. Um, but yeah, th just enough to, to get them going. You're welcome, Vicky. You're welcome. Mike Butts, thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. I'm glad you're on here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I don't like tennis balls neither, um, uh, Sabrina. I don't like them at all because of the issues that they have with them. So I just as soon not even use them. I have them for the young dogs because they make that, squeak, that squeaky noise. But um, my, uh, let's see. Hey, you guys. Like I said, you guys, I really like when kids come to my obedience class, come on, I love it. I love it when you have a little girl like me. All right, turn, come back this way, go back the other way. And this dog was I want your dad to see that you can walk the dog. I gotta show these. I love Right there, make him sit. I love kids and Give him some love. I love that they train. A lot of love. I love that they're a part of A lot of love, there you go. It's great for them to be part of the training. I mean, it's great. And look at Emily. She's teaching her little brother, Joe, this is how to handle the dog. So now she becomes the teacher. 
and the dog has to listen. When, when you get kids and dogs together, you guys, they shine. Kids learn compassion. They learn empathy. They learn love. They learn all the good traits with a well-mannered dog, that is, with a well-mannered dog that doesn't bite them. Look at little Joe here doing a great job. And then you have Leah here. here. Nice. I had Leah in nice. my class. Turn this to dog your right. Was not yep. easy. Keep walking. This dog was not easy at all. But Leah ended up controlling him really, really well. So I, it's important sometimes to engage in with, it, with kids on how to play with them, how to walk with them, how to be responsible. They got to get up in the morning to feed them. They got to play with them. All of that adds responsibility to the kid in, in a positive way, in a way that they establish respect, holding each other at a high standard, knowing that, that they have some, somebody cares for them, that loves them unconditionally. And we sometimes we live such a busy lifestyle, we don't have time to, to, to spend time with the dog. Look at the kid. This dog's coming right to her and, and sits right next to her, off lead off lead and it's a puppy and this is what you want to do you want to i like to teach kids you know dogs are not moral creatures and i teach them what morals are i like to teach them what respect is how to hold someone to a high standard well that's what we need your dog to do i, I want to teach them how not to treat them like dogs i want i want to treat them like to treat excuse me how to treat them like don't treat them like a human being treat them like dogs because they want to be treated like dogs well how do you treat them like a dog hector and then i teach them very, very important, not to get angry, not to go hands-on. Hands are for love. These are all the things that you can teach kids and dogs. And it's so important because they grow up to be adults like we do. And, and you can shape them when they're young like this. Extremely, extremely important. Uh, let's see what I got here. Uh, I'm going to go back down and read some of my... Our shopper's obsessed with his ball. What, which ball is it, Doug? Kelly, is it the, um, the Jolly Pet ball, soccer ball? Ziggy does okay with my police scanners on. I keep them on all the time. <laughs> uh, play with a ball with him, Chris. He's not interested in the police scanners. But, or a squeaky toy. Uh, uh, let's see. Kelly, ours. Is there such a thing as too much play? We play ball for hours. Well, yep. Yeah. Try to find a game that's more challenging. Kelly, for example, um, I, when I had a dog that had anxiety, uh, working anxiety, I would send the ball and I would throw it in the high grass and the dog, high meaning, yeah, high subjective, um, high meaning maybe knee high grass and the dog would chase and search for it. And I literally would throw it 10 times. The dog was completely exhausted afterwards exhausted mentally not physically mentally and so and, and very very important so yes you can play too much too much wear and tear on their body so find games like throwing something in the middle of the grass have them search for it uh, uh capri dickerson is it possible to teach a 12 year old mastiff to play who can't really get up and down easily i think at that point capri your goal is to get this dog to be very happy if I had a 12-year-old dog who didn't know how to play, what I would do is massage the dog, make sh especially if it can't um, get up, up and down, massage the dog, maybe give it some, um, some, some uh, supplements to uh, lubricate their joints, and try your best, I don't know this, life vest and swimming. Life vest and swimming. Um, very, very important to get those muscles moving uh, if they're getting muscle atrophy, when they're swimming, they're developing that muscle tissue. Um, I, I think that's what I would do. My dog turns 12 in September, September 22nd, Jello, and um, I, I take her swimming at least once a month. And, her, and by next day, she is crashed. But swimming is so important for her. Good question, though. Uh, Odie barks at nothing, seemingly, not even going to the door or window, which will be, be, uh, keep covered. But I'll take him for a walk, calm him down 15, 20 minutes. Is that long enough to release the energy? I would find a way that complements its instinct, Sabrina. I would find a way to play with them, throw a treat, have them go get it, and then get a ball with a hole in it to have them go get it. A tennis ball. Oh, you know, you're not, not a tennis ball. Forget it. 
a flirt pole, get him out there to play, get him out there stimulating him. Walking does very little to appease their instinct, okay? So what I would do, I, I would make sure he's not stressed if he's barking excessively for no reason. It could be because destructive uh, stress from around his neck and shoulders and back. I'm in the process of making a flyer, by the way, a um, little bit more detailed flyer. I had a dog, Tank, who you saw the video of, who um, he, I used him as a good, um, uh, he's going to be used as a good, good pictures because he, he was so pronounced of where his muscles were and that I, I'm going to use where, where to stretch a dog, where to massage a dog. So, and then, and then making sure that you find an outlet that plays, they plays. I worry about the treats encouraging the behavior. Um, not if you throw them, uh, take them outside and just throw them and don't use the treats right after he's barking. So, you know, they become destructive at 630, six o'clock, 615, go out there and play with them with a treat. Don't do it during their destructive behavior or even after for that matter. Do it before their destructive behavior occurs as a way to release the destructive behavior. So I charted my dog when they were puppies, when they got the zoomies. And they would usually get the zoomies at around 6, between 6 to 7.30. So I would take them out to play at 5.30. and got them extremely tired. The zoomies were gone. So I, I find when they're going to start getting that way, and then I find an outlet that complements their instinct to avoid the destructive behavior. I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Thank you. That sounds very much like that we're doing. Yes, yes, very good, um, Capri, very good. Oh, a jolly ball, yes. Uh, Kelly, Kelly, get him to play with a jolly ball, but remember, take it away after he's done playing so he doesn't become obsessed with it. Take it, um, our shepherds are obsessed with this ball. They're too late for that. But take it away and put it away somewhere and only play with it. Start making it in challenging for him. Hell, for that matter, throw the jolly ball in the water. Have him swim for it. Bring him back to you. I mean, start challenging that. My dogs love it when I throw the water, the ball in the water. And they go get it and come back. Very, very important. Uh, you're welcome, Sabrina. Make sure I didn't miss any question. I'm getting my glasses next month. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. I lost my other ones at the hotel. Uh, so it's hard for me to, how do you know when your dog has released his, okay. So remember, let me do a quick review. I like using treats, I throw the treats, I have them go get it and have them eat it. Why, because it mirrors their prey instinct. I use treats that look size of a ball I roll it, have them go get it, and they eat it. I throw another one, roll it again, throw another one. Sometimes I'll freeze the treats inside an ice cube, have them run to go get it. They chew on it. They're looking at me. Throw me another one. Throw me another one. You throw another one, have them go chase it. You throw another one. Next thing you know, they're running after the treat. So you get a ball, put it, put it inside the ball, put it inside the ball, throw the ball, roll the ball. They'll eat it. You have two or three of these, have them go get the other one. Then you're going to switch over to a ball. When you switch over to a ball, you're going to have a treat. When they come to you for the ball, with the ball, you give them a treat. You say out when they release this ball, you give them a treat. And then you throw a ball again and you have them go get it. And you have just gave your dog some therapy. You've took your dog to therapy. That's better than talking to a dog. <laughs> All right, I said that a little too fast, but you get what I'm saying. What about keeping a ball in the treat bag to help them find it? In the, oh, good idea, uh, uh, I, Ju Julian, Julian Jennings. Yeah, good idea. I like that. Um, so the ball smells like a treat, um, and then they chew it. Ooh, I like that. Thank you for that tip. Uh, so let me read that again for the viewers, especially when this goes on YouTube. Um, what about keeping a ball in the treat bag to help them find it in the tall grass. Th that's what Julian Jennings said uh, for my YouTube viewers who are going to be watching this. Yes, scent the ball with treats so when you throw it, they smell it. Um, you can use just, you can make a drug dog that way, can't you? You can get pseudo smells and ha have the dog tennis ball, 
sent it with a pseudo smell of marijuana or whatever else you want to use, had them go get it, use the word search, had them find it, now they know what the word means. Ain't that difficult. Anyways, yes, uh, Julian, yes, you can do that. Um, I like that idea too. Yeah, I, I like it too. Sharing it with everybody. I love this. I get, you guys, I get emails and messages all over the, all over the place. It's crazy how the internet has made this world very small. All over the place. Um, and, and, and it's great. I'm helping people. I'm helping trainers. I'm helping other trainers. And that's what you want to do as trainers. This isn't a competition. When you start making it a competition, and it, it starts, it starts losing your fun. Have fun with this. I love sharing my ideas. I love go, um, having other trainers in my, in my facility and me working with them. I had an excellent trainer in my facility the other day. Excellent trainer with her dog. And one thing that she didn't know was the massage. She knew everything else, but once I massaged the dog and relaxed the dog, we saw a 360 in the dog. I mean, completely different dog. And we massaged it, relaxed it. I mean, remember, there's certain dogs that are predisposed to do certain things. So we understood that. We just need to relax the dog. But playing with it is the number one thing because playing is therapy for a dog. Playing is therapy for a dog. Very, very important to understand that. Play is therapy. Um, see, Larry, seems like no matter how much we play before 8 p.m., my dog's still hyper and overly aggressive towards our other dog after 8. Um, Larry, when you, when you have a dog like that, Second guess your dog food. It could be contributing to the amount of energy that your dog is getting. Second guess your dog food. Moreover, get with your vet. Make sure there's not an underlying thyroid problem or an underlying issue that your, your, your dog is having. So the third thing, there's three things I would consider. Food, medical issue, and the third thing, make sure your dog is not physically stressed around the neck and shoulders, back and shoulders. Okay, why? Because even if you play with it a lot, that tension's still there, Larry. If that tension's still there, it still makes a dog very irritable. Very irritable, all right? Go back, go back. I want you to go back and watch how your dog stretches, Larry. If your dog is stretching like any one of these here, like the one on the top left, the, the, the stress is gonna be right where those red dots are and in front of their neck and shoulders. If, it's, if it stretches like the dog in the middle, there's stresses in the back there. If your dog rolls on his back a lot, it stresses in the back. So look where the dog is stretching to determine where the stress is. So you have dog food, you have medical, and you have stress. Look at those three things to help you, Larry. Your dog should not be doing that. You're right. Your dog should not be doing that. Uh, let's see here. All right, so 8 o'clock, 8.02. Listen, let me make sure I didn't forget anything. Uh, flirt pole, throw the treat, uh, release command with the treat, um, ball with the treat inside, or Kong. I, I, don't, I don't prefer the Kong, and I'll tell you why. Because it bounces back and forth really fast, and some dogs, when they turn really fast, they can tear an ACL. So I just like the ball going straight. Although some people do great with, with the Kongs, I just assume not use them because of that. But there's nothing wrong with using them. Uh, you can play in the house. Yep, you can play in the house when they're learning how to play or when they're a little sensitive outside. Um, and remember, how not to play with your dog, people. Please, no chasing games, no wrestling, no slap boxing. Please, 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 please. These are, these are deadly sins. These are deadly sins to most dogs. Uh, let me see, share what I got. Destructive behavior. When you see any one of these, you can infer that the dog needs to play in a way that complements their instinct. When you see one of these, you can infer that the dog has to play in a way that complements their instinct. Very, very important. You do not want them to develop sinopath. You do not want them to develop Sinopath, all right? Uh, let me see what I got. You're welcome, Larry. Uh, my dog needs them all over full body massage. Your dog and me 
<laughs> Don't forget about your t-shirts. I won't, Chris. Hey, you got to promise me something, Chris. If I give you a t-shirt, I need you to make a TikTok video of you dancing. You got to promise me. <laughs> All right. Listen, my next show will be August 11th. I'm in Florida next week on a conference. I'll be in Kentucky, then Florida. Um, I'm in Kentucky, and then I'm in between. I'm doing a couple non-disclosure uh, talks that I can't talk about where, but I'll be in Kentucky and Florida, and in between, I'll be somewhere too. Um, but very important, I won't be back until August 11th for a show. Now, let me tell you what the next topic is. The next topic is fearful dogs. I have two great videos already, and I'm going to be filming another one tomorrow on fearful dogs. And I'm going to talk about how to build these dogs' confidence, how to deal with dogs like this. You're going to see a complete change in some of these dogs. Last week, in my one-on-one -on -one sessions, I had two owners in separate times. They were crying after we got done working their dogs. They saw that drastic of a change and I don't like it when they cry because I cry too because I can feel it <laughs> but anyways it was very very heavy day for me um and, and but it was a good day heavy meaning mentally because I can feel the owners um I can feel you know what they're going through I can feel what the owners are going through when they're talking about their dog um I saved three dogs lives last week three of them and it, it was a good feeling afterwards that's why it's so heavy this is why I love my mental health days. This is my mental, if I don't take mental health days, I'm not a very good trainer the next day. I'm not. I'm only half at it. I can't be that way. So I appreciate you joining me on my mental health days. How can this be my mental health day and I'm doing a class? Because part of my mental health day is giving, is giving to others, is sharing what I know to help other people. It's sharing what I know to help other trainers. So that's part of my mental health day. I will make a TikTok video with my t-shirt when you send me the t-shirt. <laughs> okay, Chris. Thank you. You're welcome, Julia. Thank you for watching from Poland. You're welcome. Uh, no problem. Uh, so again, you guys, August 11th, fearful dogs. I got some fearful dogs for you to watch. Fearful. Some a little bit avoidance but some triggered fear. And I have another one that I'm doing tomorrow that I'll be filming. So I have three dogs to show you when they come in and then after, all right? And then the process of how I got these dogs confident. You're gonna see that. That's August 11th. The next topic will be fearful dogs. And don't forget that a dog's best friend can be a ball. A dog's best friend can be a ball. Doesn't have to be us. If you get a dog with a lot of instinct, his best friend can be a dog. Right, Becca? This is Becca's dog. Tough little dog. Tough little dog, but now it loves a ball. It was developing sinophobia initially. Now it loves the ball. So any questions, send me an email, text, and you, let, we're, you are doing great things. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Sabrina. I love that comment. I love that comment. Um, I love you guys. Don't forget that. Loving is caring. Loving is, is making sure that, that, that you're good, making sure that if you have any questions to do with your dog, I'm here for you. And remember, it doesn't, it doesn't cost you anything to share these videos. Share these videos with, with um, rescue groups, adoption groups. Their number one thing is to appease your dog's instinct. That you got to find a game that, that these dogs like. That is therapy for a dog. I know I sound redundant, but it's therapy for a dog. You have to get them to play. You have to. You have to. Floor pull. Treats. Ball with a treat inside. Then chuck it ball. If you got a soft mouth dog, you can use a kick it ball with a saw. They grab it, they just carry it around. Very good. If you wanna get them to like a Frisbee, chuck it also makes a flexible Frisbee. And a floatable frisbee for that matter. Get a flirt pole. Flirt pole, number one. Number one is a flirt pole. Very important, a flirt pole. We'll see you August 11th.
Topic. How to train a fearful dog. How to work with a fearful dog. To differentiate between a shy, fearful, and avoidance. We're going to talk about all of that. I'm going to try to show you a video. I got to get permission. A trainer came to me from another state. Her dog was fearful. She hadn't, she'd been training this dog for six months with no, no results. In one hour, this dog did a 360. 360. And I'm hoping to show you with her permission. I'm hoping to show you. 360. Totally different dog. You'll see. I'm hoping. Anyways, if not, you'll see, you'll see one. I'm, anyways, um, you'll see some dogs get stuck in the fearful stage and they haven't snapped out of it. You'll see how I snap them out of it. All right. August 11th. Going to be a good show. Tell everybody. Hector's going to be talking about fearful dogs. How to get them confident. All right. We'll see you August 11th. Watch my Facebook. I'll be in Kentucky. And in between, I won't say. And then I'll be in Florida. Hopefully, I'll send some pictures and videos. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of my mental health day. I love you guys. We will see you August 11th. I hope you like this show. I loved it. I loved it. I couldn't wait to prepare for it. We'll see you August 11th.